French touch being bands like Daft Punk, DJ Falcon, that whole French movement of the late 90s, early noughties. Love that. Christine and the Queens and Damn Funk and Girlfriend. It's new to Radio 2, which is what you're listening to. Of course you knew that. Uh, now, I Wish You Were There is on the way, and it's going to have a Jurassic Park vibe to it, because we've been talking a lot about this new Jurassic World film. On the phone right now is Tom, and I'm led to believe, Tom, that you are a super fan. Uh, yeah, hi, OJ. I guess you could say that. Yeah, I'm a very big fan. <laughs> how, how do you become a massive fan of Jurassic Park? Is it the amount of times you've seen it? Do you just love dinosaurs? Um, I suppose so, yeah. And also a combination of doing a bunch of different things to do so um doing a podcast to do with it with a bunch of other people going out to different events and things and just yeah loving dinosaurs and loving history i suppose what's the podcast called has it got some catchy punish title uh it's the jurassic park podcast so quite you know <laughs> out there and it's really like. simple and to the point <laughs> people will find it when they're searching for it um so when are you going to see the new film so it's out tonight, but I'm actually not seeing it till tomorrow. Ooh. So I'm going to see it in IMAX at Waterloo, which is the biggest IMAX screen in the country. So I'm really excited. And how are you keeping away from social media to avoid any spoilers? Um, honestly, it's quite difficult. Usually I'm on social media every day, um, just tweeting about the films, tweeting out different photos, things like that. So I'm kind of trying to dodge it, but if stuff pops up here and there, I get tagged in stuff. So it's hard to dodge it, but... It is. I'm doing the best I can, you know. That's the problem with modern social media. To try and avoid spoilers is nigh on impossible nowadays. But listen, now I know you're a super fan. As soon as I was told by my handler, D Sizzle, that you were coming on, I googled the hardest Jurassic Park quiz in the world. So I'm going to ask you three questions to see how good you are. Are you ready for this then, Tom? Okay, let's do it. Okay. What is the film's famous tagline? Oh, my God. Ah, Oh, wow, this is bad, isn't it? I don't it's even not, know this. I, think. Come on, keep thinking. It's, oh. an, it's an adventure. 65 million years in the making. There in, we go. That's indeed it thought. is. Cool. Okay, your second question is, what is Dr. Ellie Saltler's occupation? She's a paleobotanist. There you go. You're into the swing of this now. <laughs> um, according to Muldoon, your final question, at what age do the velociraptors become lethal? Lethal, and I do mean lethal. I want to say, ah, oh, it's either six or eight months. I can't remember which. It's one of the two. Which one is it? I want to say eight. It is eight, eight months. months. Tom, it is eight months. Cool. You see? You, you got into that. <laughs> Tom, thank you so much for your time, mate. Enjoy the film. Thank you. You too. Cheers, buddy. That is Tom, a Jurassic Park super fan. He knew those questions. He was good. Now, there is a new film out. We've talked about it. We've spoken to not some of the cast, but one of the cast from one of the earlier Jurassic Park films. Uh, the new one that's out is called Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And I feel like, because we do this show, you know, the first thing that you'll hear on Radio 2 every day will be this show, Monday to Friday, of course. Uh, and I feel like we're at the sharp end of the reviews. Now, there have been uh, screenings in the United Kingdom, but why do we want to stay on this continent when we can go to a different one and speak to Bradders? Hey, Brad, whereabouts are you in America? I am currently in New York. New York City. <laughs> now, you have yeah. just been to see the new Jurassic World film. Um, out of a million stars, how good is it? Whew, that's a tough question. That is a very tough question. I'll, I'll give it a million. That's fine. Is it that good, then? Because in the UK, it's had some pretty ropey reviews <laughs> from the critics. You know, it's very tough to tell right now. I literally just walked out of the theater. Um, so there is a lot to process. Okay. It's, it's a... Well, let's, it's ask, a crazy ride. Let, let's ask you some questions about the film. First off, the most important question. Sure. What snacks did you take in with you into your New York cinema? Did you go trendy or did you go like nachos with everything on? No, you know, I just, I had a big bucket of popcorn. I had some Skittles and a water. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Sweet or salted? Oh, salted. Yeah. Oh, man. I like it when you do a mix. I know I'm going off topic here. I like it when you do a mix. So what you do <laughs> is you have sweet at the bottom. And then you have the salted on top. Okay. And it's like going through a main course and getting into dessert. Anyway, I've gone off topic here. Talk me through the film. It's the follow-up. It's got Chris Pratt in. I really liked the reboot with the first one. Is this second one, The Fallen Kingdom? I mean, would you recommend it to Jurassic Park fans to go and see? Oh, absolutely. No question. If you're Jurassic Park fan, you have to be at the movie. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, it's a very different movie than the first Jurassic World. Um, very different. I can't even touch on anything without spoiling it, but it is so different. 
Yeah, don't do any spoilers because we've had a couple of people tweeting about a certain Marvel film and ruin it for me earlier on today. No. Um, yeah, I can, I've not seen it yet. Somebody texted in, which is, uh, anyway, I, I, I'm off topic again. Um, is it a bit like Jurassic Park 3 in the sense that I think Jurassic Park 3 was the one where they all ended up in New York or somewhere like that in America because they took the, the dinosaurs out on a world tour, which seemed like a good idea at the time, I guess. Yeah. That was the second movie, uh, The Lost World. They, they ended up in San Diego. Um, I would say it's nothing like The Lost World. A lot of people thought The Lost World would have a lot of vibe with this movie, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but I don't think so I don't, at all. Like On the surface, it sort of looks like it could, but not really once you see the entire thing. Well, listen, Brad, this has been great. Um, I do have to say, though, you're also a massive Jurassic Park fan. You do a podcast. I do, yes, the Jurassic Park podcast. Is that, why does everyone call it? We were hoping that somebody had a great pun title for it. We tried to come up with some earlier on, and the best we got was uh, T-Rex the Microphone and Diplopodlicus, I think was the other one we came up with. Um, it sounds like a great podcast. Um, really appreciate your time. I'm going to listen to your podcast. Good. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Not a problem. You've got I one downloader. I will do. I'm going to love it. Uh, that's Brad, who does the Jurassic Park podcast who's just been to see the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, says it's great.